to give everyone a little bit of context, today no one's walking away with a diagnosis. It's more about looking at the criteria which is used when it comes to diagnosing autism. And today we're focusing on Asperger's. There is a difference, and I will be going into the key differences. Today is about looking at what makes up a diagnosis and do you resonate with what we're saying today? If you do resonate, then it might be worth talking to your GP. If you are already diagnosed, but just want to learn a little bit more about what were some of the signs, symptoms, like quirks that people were looking for when they were finding out whether or not you were on the autistic spectrum. Now, brilliant. So exceptional individuals, we're an organization that supports neurodiverse individuals. This could be dyslexic, dyspraxic, autistic, ADHD, but also other ones like dyscalculia and dysgraphia, among others. Today, though, we're going to be focusing on autism or Asperger's, as it was commonly known. But what exactly is exceptional individuals? Well, we help recruit diverse talent. We'll get people like us into high-end organizations. We have job support, so maybe we've done coaching, one-to-ones, help with CVs, confidence, that type of thing. And we also work in corporates and do workshops and guides. And our lovely team in the background, 80% of us are neurodiverse, so we are experts by experience. Myself, I've got ASD. I was diagnosed with high functioning autism, which is quite interesting because it's not an official diagnosis and it's a term which has become less favorable now. However, that is what's on my official bit of paper. But essentially it's Asperger's. It's just different people diagnose and call it different things. Now, before I get started, I always like to give a definition of neurodiversity. What exactly does that word mean? Well, first of all, neurodiversity means absolutely everyone on the planet. It's diversity of thought. It's thinking in a different way, which we all do. But when we use the term neurodivergent, this is when we're more talking about people with autism or dyslexia, dyspraxia. A good example is this, which I'll try and explain to you. Normally, when we think of disorders like autism we think of we think of deficiencies things that people can't do okay they're not very good at speaking they can't write or spell but it, it's not that at all being neurodiverse is about the fluctuation of abilities it's about having some things you're amazing at you could be for example an amazing mathematician but you might struggle in being creative but a brilliant decision maker those skills change depending on who you are but if you are that type of person where some things you believe are below average, where others you go above and beyond, that is neurodiverse. It's not just being bad at something. It's not just being great at something. It's a range of abilities. Do I have Asperger's syndrome? Well, no, because they've stopped diagnosing it. But a lot of people still resonate with it. And it's still a very helpful term in order to explain what type of autism you are or how autism affects you. It's got a really interesting history though and I've been researching lots about the history of autism lately and if any of you are into your gory history it's definitely one to research. In the past we've had shock treatment, people with autism have been given LSD as a type of medication, there's been all sorts of horrific things in the past but a quick history recap is that a guy called Hans Asperger's first described his patients as intelligent yet lacking social skills. So he wasn't referring to the typical autism, which most people were aware of, individuals who struggled with independent living and communicating. However, he may or may not have been a Nazi. And before you say anything, we don't know that it's kind of lost in history. But what we do know is that he was either complicit in their activities or generally part of the movement. It's a little bit debated, but this is why the term Asperger's has fallen out of popular use. However, before you make up your own minds, I think it's definitely worth doing your own research because it's not black and white. He actually did some really interesting things and definitely pushed the study of innovative thinkers a dramatic way. Now, the next part is Laura Wing. 
So she published a study where she first coined the terms Asperger's. So even though Asperger's did the research beforehand, it wasn't called Asperger's. And then later on in 1994, it became an official diagnosis. And the DSM is the Diagnostic and Statistic Manual of Mental Disorders. And this is why you have people who were born before 2013 will say, oh, I have Asperger's. But you will not get many younger people saying they have Asperger's because in 2013, it became one. And now the only diagnosis which is commonly recognised is Autism Spectrum Disorder, ASD. Is that all making sense? That will be as much history as we're doing today. But I, ha we have got a webinar coming up in a few months time where we take a really deep dive in the history of autism. And believe me, it is really fascinating and also quite shocking in places. Now, what exactly are, is the difference? There are some key differences and a lot of the time the terms are thrown around back and forth. But when people talk about autism, typical autism, they're normally talking about those who are not particularly obsessed with one area. Language skills could be delayed. Motor skills are OK. Probably might struggle to live independently. And on average are diagnosed by three. Your Asperger's, when we refer to Asperger's, we're normally talking about an individual who might have a obsession might be really focused on one area maybe you know every single pokemon by color that would be a great example or you could have language skills that are not delayed so yes you still might struggle with language but you could talk at a normal age or an average age you're able to at least communicate your wants and desires to a certain level and i say that because I think I was nearly five by the time I first started talking, so I was delayed, but obviously I've been able to catch up since recently. Another one which isn't normally recognised when you look at the diagnostic manual, but people with Asperger's normally have poor motor skills, which means about like moving, interacting with the world, really, co really closely linked with another neurodivergence called dyspraxia, which I imagine some of you are aware of. I definitely am. I've got it. Oh, it took me so long to manoeuvre the world and not bash into it. Also, people with Asperger's can absolutely live independent and it normally gets diagnosed a little bit later on life. And for our YouTube channel, it's exceptional individuals. So just go onto YouTube and type exceptional individuals and with a little blue icon with a like and a, a dot and an I. So those are the key differences. And there is a lot of overlap. And like I said, a lot of people aren't currently diagnosed with Asperger's anymore. And an old term for it used to be high functioning. But we don't like to use that term anymore because by calling someone high functioning, you're calling someone else low functioning. And who likes to be called low functioning? No one. So what activity would you rather do? Are you someone who would prefer, prefer peace and quiet and reading a book? Are you a very social person who enjoys sports? Do you like the odd party, like Elmo? Or are you a keen gamer and might not come out of your house for days? And these questions might seem a bit random, but I promise you there is a reason for it. And I'll give some good context as we get on. All right, brilliant. Well, a lot of people have said reading. And the reason we put this question is that people with Asperger's typically prefer more introverted activities, ones which are more you facing. So it might not be reading, it could be audio books, it could be doing puzzles, anything which is more of a solo activity which requires you to be with yourself than other people. Gaming is another great example, though gaming can be social, but the type of, the, the way you socialise is, is different you know, you're behind the screen and you might find that more comfortable. So Fella has said, I isolate myself voluntarily. And that's completely fine. We always think like, oh, if you're introverted, that's a bad thing. Introverted is when you're more of a self person and extroverted is someone who's the life of the party. But there really isn't a right or wrong way of going about it. Okay, this question is, what do the facial expressions of the girl with a pearl earring tell us about how she is feeling? And I, I purposely picked a picture which is quite ambiguous, so there isn't a right or wrong answer for this. 
Aljandra said, I choose archery because it's a sport that doesn't require a team. I like archery as well. It's a good choice. You can still be sporty, but isolated. Teresha says, not being able to do. All right, so we put anxious, surprised, don't bother me, <laughs> thoughtful, can't read facial expressions, longing. I like that. She's listening to someone. Nothing. She's deadpan. Surprised. She's fed up. She's curious. Possibly fearful. Not a bored, tense, looking like someone has called her a name and is looking around at you. <laughs> I can't identify any feelings on her face. Like she wants you to follow her. Perhaps not happy that she has been captured in a painting. Blank. Doing what the artist told her to do. Nice. <laughs> All really good answers. Now, <sighs> For those of you who know about autism already, a lot of the time it comes down to social interaction, about reading body language. And this image is over the top ambiguous, but it's a good example of what those with Asperger's might face on a day to day basis. Where, you know, for a lot of people, it's pre built. So you smile, obviously oh, happy, so you're sad. But that's not always the case. You know, there's like subtle things like an, an odd smirk or that kind of smile, which normally means you're about to cry or that kind of worried face. Or if someone just has one of those resting faces, you know what I mean? People with Asperger's might really struggle to interpret them correctly. It's not saying about the really obvious ones, but with Asperger's, it's normally like the subtle facial expressions, which can be quite difficult to pick up on. In day-to-day -day activities, humans do a thing called mirroring. When we look at someone and we'll replicate how they're feeling and that emotion will kind of get planted on us at the same time. But with Asperger's and other types of autism, that kind of mutual connection doesn't happen. So you can't read them, but also that person is struggling to read you as a result. And this is one of the reasons why it can be very difficult. So imagine this, if you're supporting someone with autism, Go under the impression that they may not be able to read all the nuances and think, is there an alternative way I can communicate with them for them to get the meaning I'm trying to convey? This also relates to things like sarcasm and sense of humour. You might be on different wavelengths. All right, collection. We talked a little bit about obsession and kind of getting fixated on stuff, but I'm curious to pass to you all of you now. Is there anything that you collect? like obsessively. I remember when I was younger, I used to collect the Beanos and Dandies, you know, the British comic, and I had as many as I could. I tried to get every single date or collecting Pokemon cards or even things like sticks and rocks. I'd get really, really quite obsessed. The other day I went to the beach and I just picked up a shell and because I held on to it for so long, I just couldn't bear to drop it again. I kind of got attached to it. Shoes, nice. Books, bunty annuals, gothic horror series. And my mum is obsessed with horror and I'm definitely sure she's on the spectrum as well. Yu-Gi-Oh cards, Ikea furniture, used to work at Ikea. World coins, nice one, seashells, TV merchandise, Star Wars stuff. Whoever said that, I actually got some Star Wars questions in this, so you'll like that. Sand dollars, Potter. Maybe, is that Harry Potter or pottery? So we've got, I restrained myself if ever since people in my family started pointing out that I was obsessed, but I will obsessively collect comics, pens, mugs. I collect digital things, lol, like 3D models for posters and daz. I collect cinema memorabilia as my dad ran a cinema magazine. I have a Spectrum Mag, 80 Steel, novel, horror, cigarette packets and around the world books, but I don't read them. I know that I got a lot. Wow. Okay. So we've we've got a lot of people. The most common one is books and rocks. You know what? I get it. I get it. Who doesn't love a good rock? <laughs> Though I recently went away to Devon and honestly, you know, like the sticks of rocks. Who likes them? That's something I've never been able to understand. They're they're awful. Stop giving them as presents. Okay. Harry Potter items. Lorraine loves the shoes. 
And it can be quite common for people who have Asperger's to be quite poor when it comes to money management because they will just want to buy, buy, buy. That also relates to ADHD as well. So if you've got money issues, I feel sorry for you. Me too. Corvid said, I joke a lot with friends about having a magpie instincts where I frequently want to start collecting neat things I find. Yeah, that, that's really common. And also talking about being a magpie, taking things, whether or not they're yours or not, can also be quite common. Not because you go out of your way to be malicious, but because you just see something and the brain gets like stimulated and gets endorphins through collecting it and holding onto it. What is the Queen's official birthday? Appreciate the Peppa Pig reference. Is it the 2nd of June, the 12th of June, the 12th of November, or the 21st of April? So the Queen's birthday, official birthday, and I appreciate there's a lot of you who aren't in the UK today, but let's face it, she does own half the world. Oh, interesting. A lot of you, well, the vast majority got it wrong. The 2nd of June is her official birthday. April says, I chose her actual birthday by mistake. Yeah, there's the official birthday and her actual birthday. Is it the 12th of June that is her other birthday? And why, why am I asking this? I'm sure we could chat about Her Majesty till the cows come home. But the reason why is that those who are, have Asperger's tend to be really good with dates and remembering key bits of information. This closely relates to the kind of obsession side. It does imagine you're not just obsessed with buying shoes. You might know everything about a certain brand of shoes when they first were created, when they were made, the different dates. You might remember parts of history which no one else remembers. Crystal says, it's not something that would be common knowledge in my part of the world. I'll, I'll let you off on that. I remember my friend, her real birthday is 21st of April, but April weather is not too, is carries. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, personally, I think she's a bit greedy. But either way, the dates are what, what are important. Do you have a mind for remembering dates? That is one of the common characteristics of those who have Asperger's. Though before I continue, I just want to make a quick little caveat, is that say if some of these you do not resonate with, that doesn't mean you do not have autism. These are just common characteristics. And also, if you finish today and you're like, yes, I have every single thing you mentioned today, Nat, that also doesn't mean you have autism. These are just the most common characteristics which are associated and are definitely a good starting point for a discussion. What movie was released in 1977? And I saw one of you was a fan, so you might find this rather easy. Is it The Empire Strikes Back, American Graffiti, Star Wars or Raiders of the Lost Ark? Oh, interesting. Yes, most of you got that right. And I want to say, personally, I think this was a rather easy one. But with all of these things, I don't know if any of you may have noticed, but there is a really big correlation between Comic-Con and people who have Asperger's. Anyone who is a massive fan, anyone who really like maybe anyone here loves Doctor Who or loves Harry Potter, like different communities or things where you can get really immersed in. Those are things that link up so perfectly with autism. Star Wars has a massive community and you'll normally notice when you go to any conventions, there's definitely a certain type of person who is more expressive, feels more comfortable in their own skin. These, well, these communities are really great. It doesn't have to be Star Wars, but anything where there's a little star community. Lee's more of a Star Trek fan, I see. And uh, I haven't gotten into Star Trek yet, but maybe I will. I'm going through all sorts at the moment. Oh, yeah, I've been watching Zack Snyder's Justice League and kind of working my own way through all of those films. Too many people at conventions can't do crowds. Yeah, Maverick, that is one of the downsides, is that in one way it's perfect for people who kind of have those niche, like, curiosities and likes. But on the other hand, it can be a very overstimulated environment. Okay, this one is a good one. What is the first thing you see in this image? So try not to think about it too long. Just look at it and write down the first thing you see. And the reason this is on this is that people who have Asperger's are just like everyone else in the world, but they might see things from a different perspective. They are not seeing things wrong. They're not seeing things right. They're just seeing things 
in their own perspective, just like every one of us in the world. Now, most people will see a frog. Other people will see a horse. It might be a grumpy frog, a person, a water, an eye crying. Wow. So a toad. Now, all of these, right, are all correct. None of them are wrong. It's all about how the eyes interpret. So if I go back to the image here, you'll see, okay, you've got the little froggy eyes there, frog mouth. He's, I'm guessing he's on some sort of lily pad. But if you rotate your head, you'll see it's a horse. So you've got the horse's eye there, a nose, a mouth, the mane. And this just depends on the way that you choose to look at it or your brain automatically looks at it. And that's essentially what Asperger's is in a nutshell. It's the brain just looking at the world from a slightly different perspective. And those who are neurotypical may not be able to see the same thing that you're seeing, but that doesn't make it any less true or any less real. There were so many examples of these types of images. I went down a bit of a rabbit hole, but they are really fun to look at. And I think they demonstrate autism in a really simplistic way because a lot of people find it a very mysterious way of thinking, but, but it's not really. It's just imagine turning your head to the side and seeing something at a different angle. Or when you're looking up at the sky and you see a cloud, you see a dinosaur, your mate sees a teacup. Neither one of you are right or wrong. It's up to the viewer's intention. It isn't the old expression, art is in the eye of the beholder. And that, that really is true. All right. What would you get the most enjoyment out? Do you prefer chilling in the library? or 24 seven party person. And this is enjoyment. This is quite similar to the previous one. And this is because this is one of the most common characteristics. It is about being more isolated. Autism, if you look at the original definition, not the original definition, but what the word means, it is alone. I think it comes, I think I want to say it comes from a Greek word and it means alone. Oh, yes, April's nodding. I'm gonna, I'll take that as a yes. She's my uh, knowledge hub. So even at the very, very beginning of when it was first coined, it was always about being happy in yourself, not kind of enjoying social activities. And there's nothing wrong with that. That isn't something that we should actively work to avoid. I think it's good to understand how your brain works and appreciate that you can't always be isolated. Though other people, on the other hand, might be really social. These are just common characteristics. If you know one person with autism, you know one person with autism. Melanie said, substitute reading with watching TV. I hate reading. That's fine. It's not for everyone. Sometimes I like going to the library just to be quite, you know, quiet. Um, they have video games there. They have audio books. The main thing is, do you prefer being on your own or do you prefer being in large groups? Some people bounce off of people and being around others, they get really energized and excited. Other people get very worn out and exhausted by being in large groups. People with Asperger's tend to be on the latter side, getting more worn out and drained through being with large parties. Maverick says, I loved quiet libraries and doing strange research projects when I was younger or under teenager. Sam, yeah. I'd rather choose a library because it's peaceful there and I can be alone. I'm curious to know, actually, from a lot of you, have you found lockdown good or bad? Like, have you enjoyed the time alone or has it gotten too much for you? I know for myself, I always thought I enjoyed being on my own, but I realise there is a limit to how much. I think I realise I prefer being social more than I actually initially realized Kimberly says it's been harder now but I'm back at work really hit me I reckon the transition's going to hit a lot of us lockdown has been great and very difficult oh love lockdown I found the concept of library soothing my son prefers to be alone definite downside but I haven't been able to be bothered by lockdown at most I love the lockdown Lockdown has been good. Lockdown has been good for us being alone. Hard because issues with my daughter. So it's, it's a really mixed bag. 
And I think there isn't a right or wrong answer, but change is happening. And that's one thing with those who are on the spectrum typically struggle with, which is rapid change. Okay, now it's story time. Excuse the little monkey on the uh, drums. Once a monkey started, and what I need you to do is finish the sentence. So whatever pops into your mind, just get it out there and try and think outside of the box. People who have autism might struggle with imagination, but those with Asperger's tend to have a really vivid imagination. They typically are able to create stories and images which other people wouldn't necessarily even start to think of. Think of things like Adventure Time or Rick and Morty cartoons, which are so bizarrely fantastical. I'm not saying the creators of these are on the spectrum, but these are typical ways that people who think differently have been able to come up with weird, wonderful and wacky ways of seeing, interpreting and writing down the world we live in. All right, this is always a fun one and also a high likelihood for possible trolls. All right, little monkey, go away. All right. Once a monkey started to bang the tambour dr drums, gracefully uh, at a bear, at a garden. It could not find a way to stop without drawing attention to itself. It was embarrassing. Riding a bike to travel around the world. The monkey is a politician at home. It started jumbling and trying to do a woman holding a baby. Trying two toast marshmallows on a drum. Very nice. Drawing a picture of a mouse. Oh wow, there's so many. Riding a bike to travel around the world. Good monkey to began playing the drums to pass the time during the pandemic. The monkey at a colorful palm tree at a beach in a rainbow colored coconut. Wow. So this is beautiful chaos at the moment. And what this is meant to symbolize is being able to escape into your own world. It's quite common that those with Asperger's can spend hours and hours on their own and they're not bored. It's because they've been able to kind of create their own universe. This will be a super nerdy reference, but for those of you who understand it, good on you. If you've been watching WandaVision on Disney+, Plus, she's a super hit, um, hero that just couldn't take the outside world. She found it too busy, so she created her own little like bubble and universe. And this was her place where she felt safe. There's also a great correlation between being amazing writers and having autism. April, for example, again, again is an amazing writer, really detailed, really thoughtful, really particular with the language. So these are some of the really good strengths of Asperger's or ASD. Okay, next one is, I tend to have very strong interests, which I get upset about if I can't pursue. Does this sound like you? Does it something you disagree with? Like not at all? Or something you really agree with? It's not being understood because there is a spelling error. I have always been able to create my own little world. I was a huge storyteller when I was a child and now still am. Oh, that's really nice, Kelly. And for those of you who said it was a bit confusing the way I word it, I'm heavily dyslexic, so uh, excuse that. <laughs> Typically, if you aren't able to pursue something you want to do, this could make someone with Asperger's very agitated or very uncomfortable. And the way I explain this is think of like kind of like blinkers on the eye. It's that you are hyper focused in achieving your goal. So if someone stops you from being able to pursue the interest, it can make you very stressed. It's like you haven't completed a level or you feel incomplete. I have this, you know, suppression where like every time I walk, I have to like step on a drain pipe and like one, two, three. And you might think that's like like an OCD tendency, but it does relate to Asperger's and autism. It's the brain gets again a little bit of a kick or a stimulus from being able to finish different activities. And if they get interrupted, it can be very distressing. So if, for instance, you're a parent and you're supporting a child who has autism, sometimes you might think it's not appropriate to finish X activity, but actually by letting them finish that pattern, it can make the whole process so much smoother because in their mind, stopping and starting might just throw them completely off tangent. 
Sam says, definitely. When I was younger, learned to work around it, though. Kelly's, when I was growing up, I always had to touch any uh, Camaro car that I saw. If I couldn't do it, I would get upset. My family thought it was sweet. <laughs> it's it's so cool. Like all of us have our own little quirks. And I had so many where uh, I couldn't walk backwards. Or if I passed like a type of lamppost, I'd have to turn around. And I couldn't tell you why I had to do it. I just had to do it. Because if I didn't do it, I kind of felt really weird inside. And that's a common characteristic. It's one which is about the brain kind of achieving a goal that it had planned out for you, even if it was sub subconscious. Joe says, it can't complete an activity. I feel unsettled. Yeah. All right, here we got to some facts. So the first one I got is avocados are a fruit, not a vegetable. Two, the Eiffel Tower can be 15 centimetres taller during the summer. Australia is wider than the moon. Or typographobia is the fear of closely packed holes. Now, why is this related to Asperger's? Well, as we went back to the ones about, for instance, remembering dates like the Queen's birthday or when films came out like Star Wars, it's all about the, how, what the brain finds interesting. So imagine this like a uh, facts or interest could be like sugar to the brain and it like wakes it up. So with someone who has a real passion about something, every time their brain enjoys something, they'll kind of get a little kick out of it. And this is why those with autism tend to become experts in one particular area. Neurotypical people, people who do not have a unconventional way of thinking, will most likely be generalists. So, you know, a bit okay at most things. Well, those of us who have ASD will normally become so focused and specialised on one area that they might even be the best in that sector. But any sort of facts, numbers, statistics are something which the brain finds very easy to latch onto. A little bit different if you also have dyslexia, but if you just have ASD or Asperger's, very common. There's this common thing where everyone assumes that everyone with Asperger's wants to become a coder. Not true, but there is definitely a reason why those sort of data-driven roles do appeal to people who might think differently. And it doesn't have to be the tech sector, any kind of industry which allows there to be a very firm right or wrong answer, black or white, which the brain can easily process, tend to appeal to those with Asperger's. But if any of you have what we call a co-occurring condition, so Asperger's and dyslexia or and dyspraxia and ADHD, it might make it appear a little bit different. So take it with like a pinch of salt. Okay, so what we got here? I, oh, Alex says, I have typophobia. It's awful to fear of wide open spaces. I find it fascinating because I'm obsessed with the human brain. Fascinating though. Being specialist happens at work. I sponge up work in my area. It can cause social issues and can be intimidating to others. It's also a little different when you also have ADHD. You may have a passion, but might struggle to sustain it and become disciplined in it. Kimberly, being specialist happens at all. Okay, we said that. So all of these are really, really good answers. And just be, it sounds like it's not always a positive thing. You can become so focused in one area that other areas take a bit of a hit. It's not uncommon for those of us to struggle with relationships. That's a common downside, I suppose, to being really, really focused on a given area. A really good example of someone who resonates with having Asperger's is Bill Gates from Microsoft. He, you know, was so dedicated to what he did that other things on his life kind of fell apart. There's so many cases of you know, the sad genius, like a Vincent van Gogh's. I'm not saying we're all prone to have a miserable life, not at all, but there is definitely a strong link between focus, genius, and depression. 
And for Crystal, who says you don't feel like a specialist, it might just be that you haven't found that thing that kind of ignites your passion or interest. But it also might mean that that's just not one of the characteristics that you you have, because it, it really is so different for all of us. Would you consider Homer Simpson from The Simpsons a good or a bad human being? So just let me know. Do you think he's a good guy, a bad guy, oh, or you don't read or watch Harry Potter? Don't know why that's there. And I was thinking about different characters I could use to demonstrate this. The previous one I did, it was Harry Potter, that's why. And it was about Snape. Is Snape a good guy or a bad guy? Is Anakin Skywalker, is he a good guy or a bad guy? It can be quite difficult for some of us to see beyond the first layer. Okay, the person strangling his son, he's a bad guy. But under the surface... He supports his family, he's gone to space, he's saved Springfield numerous times. Or with Sky, with Anakin, yes, he became a, a baddie and he ended up killing loads of little Jedis or Padwans, but he genuinely cared and he did have redemption in the end. Or with Snape from Harry Potter, yes, he tormented Harry for many years, but he did it because he loved Harry's mother. Spoiler. It can be very difficult to see individuals in a three-dimensional manner. It, you know, people with ASD aren't very good at kind of digging beneath the surface. And this is why people say, oh, I take it so literal. For me, Anakin is a very dumb guy. Sorry to the other fans. <laughs> he has a very complicated character. Can't say he's completely good or bad. It's stupid and a jerk, but has a good heart. Oh, for Homer. Anakin went to the bad side, so I would say that he went from good side to bad side. I would say he ended up on good side at the end, but either way, people are complicated. There isn't ever a good or a bad, and stories tend to oversimplify it. But in real life, if someone does something bad by you, it's not that they're a 100% bad character. But with those with Asperger's, it can be very difficult to change that track of thought. If someone makes a negative impression from you early on, shifting that negative impression to a positive one or a neutral one can definitely feel like an uphill battle. And that's something I experienced myself. I end up like having like beef with someone when they definitely didn't mean to upset me. However, they did. Are you like Millhouse? How many friends would you cons how many people would you consider a friend? One to zero to two, three to six, seven to fourteen, or maybe 40, 30 plus. So a close friend is someone who you'd probably talk to if you had an issue or wanted to talk to someone. <laughs> Star Wars sounds so complicated, lol. I'm staying with Star Trek. <laughs> That's completely fine. Oh, Homer is fundamentally a good because bad requires effort and intent, both of which poor Homer sadly lacks. Clarion. I like that. That's a really good answer. Maverick, what kind of friend are we talking about? I have different kinds of friends. Very close friends, but I know hundreds of people. I would say very close friends. Kimberly, I Can I say something? Can oh. I say something? Yeah, I, go for I, it. I, friendship, I struggle to make friends mm. oh, stop yeah no, that is a really really common characteristic of asperger's and it it because it's two reasons for one typically they have you might have social you might have a staggered approach to learning social skills when you're younger because they weren't kind of pre-built in you the second one could be the way that communication happens and misreading signals just like we saw the painting of the girl with the pearl or Homer Simpson, you might unintentionally read the person the wrong way. But what I would say is those with Asperger's, the friends you do have tend to be really good friends. Some people might have hundreds of friends, but they don't really know them and they don't go above and beyond. But if you have one or two or three to six, I would actually say that's probably the best number possible because they tend to be genuine. Trish says, finding it hard to keep looking at the repetitive moving images. Yeah, do you know what? I'm going to leave Millhouse alone. <laughs> All right, the second, this one is on problem solving. So which cube can be made up by folding the giving shapes? All you need to do is place a little pin on your phone on 
A, B, C, D, E, F, whichever one you think makes it up. Crystal says, difficult making friends, but haven't made any in years. Just stick to my family. I think that's life in general. You know, we typically stick to what we know works. Time is very precious. Corvid, I had to program my own social skills later on. Like I missed out on essential software updates. Then I was a kid and had to craft my own algorithms to compensate on initiatives. But I made it work usually. I like that. I like that um, answer a lot kind of feel the same way it's something which doesn't come naturally but you can teach yourself even if it is hard work all right to put you out of your misery the correct answer is a a is the correct answer and this allows you to see in 3d space people with asperger's tend to be quite good at looking at images in different point of view so for instance if you were to fold it all up a would be the correct one reading between the lines this is a classic one. If you are not direct with me, I'm going to misinterpret what you're saying and completely overlook it. So here, Donald Trump has said, windmills are the greatest threat in the US to both bold and golden eagles. Media claims fictional global warming is worse. Okay, Trumpy, but what are you really saying? Are you saying eagles are protecting, need, need protecting from windmills? Are you saying the media can't be trusted Re-elect me, re-elect me, the truth. Fossil fuels mean more money for the US, which makes me look good. We should focus less on climate change and more on America. So on this narrative, he is, is, I would say it's probably the media can't be trusted and also about making the US look good. On the surface, he's saying one thing, but under it, he has a hidden agenda. And this might be an area which someone with Asperger's might struggle to read between the lines. We're almost there. We're almost there. Where's Wally? <laughs> and for those American, where's Waldo? This comes to the point that being able to see things from other worlds, maybe you can find Wally really easy, maybe you can't. But typically those with Asperger's will pick up on tiny details which others will completely look over them it's um like in the image of the frog and the horse some of you said you saw like a, a a weeping eye i don't know where you saw that weeping eye but amazing and that's seeing i saw someone else find him first lol i have a lot of trouble with visual processing though this wouldn't take me ages this would have took me ages and that's fine i'm not saying if any of you are bad at wally -E, that you do not have asperger's it's more about being able to see things which others do not see. So you might pick up a different piece of information via this. So just to summarise, Asperger's is difficulty with social interaction, restricted interests, desire for sameness, distinctive strengths. Now, some of these strengths include remarkable focus and persistence, you know, never kind of giving up, being making sure that you're an expert in one area, altitude for recognizing patterns maybe you kind of look at things from another way you notice colors or lines or things which no one else would even dream of recognizing attention to detail like we said now with all these strengths does come challenges and some of these challenges could be hypersensitivity maybe sound like going to comic-con is too noisy maybe you know get someone hugging you you just don't like the feel of it or certain clothes it could be that difficult with non-verbal communicate conversation so you know facial expressions you know subtle differences in how the body moves and picking up what that really means also anxiety and depression which sadly is really common when it comes to those with autism smells for me my partner says i'm like our dog <laughs> I like is it, Sarah, can i ask a question is yeah. it anxiety and depression very common in asperger's it is it is um and that could be for a number of reasons. The one reason could be that because your brain is always working to compensate to work in a neurotypical world, it puts a lot of strain and burnout on your brain. But we don't know for certain. But if any of you are on antidepressants, um, me too. It, it's very common. I'm not a great thing, to be honest, but it's worth knowing that it is connected and related. All right, we're doing good. We might go slightly over. So apologies for that. But so much great content. Now, if any of you are in the UK and were like, yes, everything you said today sounds like me, there is support in the workplace. 
all you need is a job and then you can get equipment, training, coaching, mentoring, and it's called a workplace needs assessment. If that sounds of interest to you, please get in touch with us separately. Now, any questions? Yes, I have a question. Yeah, Jane, cool, go for it. I struggle with hypersensitivity and uh, nonverbal. I don't know what you call it, but just not wanting to um, communicate verbally, but only sometimes when um, when something happens or I'm frustrated, but not all the times. Okay. I mean, a lot of these kind of symptoms or characteristics, whatever you want to call them, they don't have to be consistent. They, they can like fluctuate. So depending on your mood, if you're stressed, if you've got other things going on in life, that's why sometimes it affects you and other times it doesn't. And one of the, Alex says, can you talk a bit about it in women? Big old subject in women. Autism didn't exist in women early on. Of course they did. It always has. But the, de the way that it looks and appears is very different in women. And that's one of the reasons why they typically get missed, is that the way it shows itself is different. Or why don't we go for patients? I would like to ask, what are the, you know, like women, we tend to mask autism or asperger's as we present ourselves as neurotypical. Yeah. So what are the one things that normally anyone, any doctors or professional who diagnose, what do they normally look for? Because so, we are look very, we look very normal. We do act, we do talk, we are able to respond to you. So what do, we, what do they actually look for? Most of the time? Hmm. Well, a lot of the things that I mentioned today is what they'd look for, but it's normally a lot more subtle. So... Mm -hmm. For instance, I would go and online, there's like characteristic quizzes and by doing them and going to your doctor and giving them as much information as possible, because normally in the consultations that you have with them, it just isn't long enough for them to get a firm understanding. Yes, yeah, yeah. At, it, has yeah. To, it has to put you at a disadvantage in, in communication settings. So if it's negatively impacting your life, whether it's in education or day to day life, that's when they'll take it seriously and start looking into it. Yeah. Uh, Joe? Thank you oh, yes. so much. I just want to say thank you for the session. It was really informative. I, I'd learned some time ago that some people with schizophrenia have been misdiagnosed when they actually um, have autism. Is that correct? Yeah, Joe, really interesting. And that goes back to like the, the very, very beginning of history. A hundred years ago, when autism was first coined, they it was referred not to autism that we know today, but to schizophrenia. And they used to do electric shock therapy. But I can say it's not the same. It's just it was a very, very poor understanding of it. So people with autism were treated with medicine concept equipment that was used for schizophrenia yeah because i work with somebody uh, with, with schizophrenia but some of her traits and characteristics seemed like to be autism and we did have her assessed uh, and she was autistic i mean it didn't take away the diagnosis unfortunately of schizophrenia but it helped us uh, support her a bit better yeah no thank you okay i think i've only got time for one more but uh teresa if i'm pronouncing that right Okay, okay, who can do assessments? I'd say get in touch with us, get in touch with us on a one to one basis because that's a, a big subject. Lee, I also want to say that the interactive, brilliant, great session. Oh, lovely, everyone. That's really nice. Well, how about this? You can say how much you enjoy today, and it's a bit biased because I'm watching, but that's fine. And what you can do is get in touch with us and we can always have a one to one a consultation. We can help you in work or we can even have a chat about your business. Oh, wow. Five, 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 five. five. I'm going to quickly change the screen before that changes too much because I'm happy with that. And here's how to get in touch with us. So it's exceptionalindividuals.com. And do check out our event, Bright, because we have some really interesting webinars coming up. We've got autism versus ADHD. Autism versus Asperger's, looking into more detail about the difference and similarities, understanding pop culture and autism, and also a brief history, which is really, really fascinating. But feel free to follow up with me via email if you have any additional questions. Bye all. Cool.